One question that I often get asked is, how do you know when you should give up on a goal or when you should continue to push forward, especially if it feels like you're not getting the results that you want? And so I have four things that you can use as clues and determining factors for you to know if it's something that you are doing that you should give up on or if you should continue to push forward. And the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, are you forcing it? There is a multitude of energies available to us in order to accomplish our goals and our dreams. However, usually when we are tapping into that energy, if we are trying to accomplish something that is meant for us, it will not feel like you are forcing it. So if you find yourself trying to get someone to see your point of view or trying to manipulate or force a situation or circumstance to go the way that you want it to go and you are finding that you keep butting your head up against the wall, nine times out of 10, you probably are chasing a goal that is not meant for you. You do not have to force people or circumstances to bend to your will if there is something that you want to accomplish that was meant for you. All you have to do is show up in the essence of that goal and do the steps that you need to do internally, your own steps in order to make that happen. And you will see the doors start to open for you to continue to propel you on the right path. So if you're trying to change a person or if you're trying to change a circumstance to go the way that you want and you're trying to change things that are outside of changing yourself, then you're probably doing it all wrong and you probably should step back. The other thing that I tell my private clients is you need to make sure that you are in alignment with what it is that you are trying to achieve. The reason why alignment is so important is that sometimes we chase goals based on our conditioning, our upbringing, um, what society tells us that we should do, what have, what have you. And so what you will end up doing is going after goals that may not be your own. And I think that we all know what it feels like to feel in our heart that something is not right, but rationalize and talk ourselves into doing something that we know that we feel is not the right thing to do. And so when you do that, not only are you working toward a goal that's not for you, but you're also expending a lot of energy trying to make it happen. If you feel like you are unsure if you are trying to make something work and you should keep trying to make it work or you should stop, I would tell you to make sure you check in with your heart and make sure you check in with your intellect, with your mind. And if those two are not together, especially if your heart is telling you something and then your mind is trying to rationalize something different. So maybe your heart is telling you you should leave a relationship, but your mind is trying to tell you the reasons why you shouldn't. Or if your heart is telling you to stick it out and be committed to something, but your mind is trying to come up with reasons why you should let something go, then you have some work to do. And again, usually your heart is telling you the right thing to do. And if you are talking yourself out of something or into something or in a different direction than what you feel deep down in your heart, you usually have a clue there that you probably need to reevaluate what it is that you're going after. This is one of my favorite things that I teach my clients and it is a very scientific, but when you look in a mirror, even though you instantaneously see your reflection in the mirror, there is a delay between your image hitting that screen and what you see, but it's so imperceptible that you don't even notice that it's happening. And that's when you're messing with light and all kinds of fast energy. But think about when you are trying to change very dense, very slow energy, like material energy, like matter. That takes a lot of effort to move it all around to create what it is that you're trying to create and materialize and manifest. So if you don't notice the results of what it is that you're trying to create, a question that you may want to ask yourself is, are you willing to keep going even if you don't see the results? And the reason why is because there will be a delay in proportion to what it is that you are trying to change in order to accomplish your goal. And if you're somebody that can't keep your energy focused and consistent, even though you may not see results, meaning if you don't have the faith that you just put your order out 
into the world and that you will eventually get what you want and then you just continue to do your work to work toward what it is that you want, then you may want to reevaluate if you should give up or not. Because sometimes you are going to have to be consistent and focused and you're going to have to continue to do the work that you need to do without seeing evidence right away of what it is that you want to manifest or materialize. And if you can't dig in deep and if you can't have faith for something to happen and to occur in your life, then you are going to do yourself a disservice because anytime that you don't believe or anytime that you go through a period of consistent doubt, it almost sets back the timetable for when it is that you're going to get what it is that you're trying to have. For instance, if you want to accomplish a career goal and you start off really motivated and then all of a sudden you start to give up or you start to doubt because you don't see things happening the way that you want them to, you need to know that even though things could be happening very slowly and underneath the surface and you don't notice them, that doubt shows the world, that doubt tells the world that you don't want it anymore. When you start to give up, when you start to say it'll never happen, you get exactly what you believe. And that little bit of time that you don't believe sets you back. And if you continue to do that over and over and over again on your quest to receive something that you want, then you're going to find that you keep taking one step forward and taking two steps back. In which case, it may be better for you to stop and do some mindset work before you start to move forward on a goal. And then the last one is, are you wishful thinking? And this is when you think that you have this big desire to accomplish something and you hope that it'll happen, but you don't wanna put the work in to make it happen. So unlike the last scenario, in this scenario, you just think that something is going to magically materialize without you having to align your thoughts and your actions behind what it is that you want to accomplish. And if you're not willing to do that, if you're not willing to be the person that is worthy of what it is that you want, or if you are not willing to shift who it is that you need to be in order to align with those things, then you are wishful thinking. You cannot change other people and you rarely can change other circumstances without expending a tremendous amount of energy and probably still not getting optimal results. All you have control over is you. And so you need to ask yourself, is this something that you really want? And are you truly 100% doing the things that are within your power to make that happen? And if you are not, and yet you still find that you're not getting what you want, then I'm probably going to say that you're leaning more in the category of wishful thinking because some of our goals in life are going to require us to be very consistent, very dedicated, and very focused, especially if it's a, a larger goal that you're trying to accomplish in life from where you already are right now. So those are four of my reasons to help you see if you're on the right track, should you keep going, should you stop, when should you stop, etc. However, there's one thing that can eliminate all of that and it's the hack that I've been talking to you guys about for the past couple weeks and it's astrology. If you learn how to use astrology in your personal life, you learn how to use it in a multitude of ways. One way is you learn about timing. You learn when doors are more likely to be open for you to move forward on your goals versus when they kind of are shut and it may be a time to be more reflective or to change your strategy or your plan or something like that. Astrology can also tell you a little bit about your relationships and your current life path. And so once that is revealed to you through studying astrology and you find that you're on a totally different trajectory than what you see um, in your astrology information, then you may want to check and adjust and move more in the direction of what is revealed to you. And you may find that life opens up a little bit better. You start to get more in alignment with your purpose. You are capitalizing and leveraging your strengths and you avoid a lot of struggles that you may tend to run into when you're not as informed as you would be by learning your astrology information. And those are just some of the ways, those are just a couple ways that astrology can help you move on the path to your highest and best good and do it very easily, 
do it with clarity, do it so you're making better decisions and you're able to clearly see if you're on the right path or not, which decreases your stress, which increases your confidence, which increases your self-worth and your ability to believe in yourself to get stuff done because you're not wasting a lot of time doing a bunch of stuff that's not in alignment with you and you are focusing your time, your energies, your strategies on things that are going to help move the needle in the right direction for you. If you are interested and learning more about how astrology can help you, I have a series of classes this summer. The first one, it's called the Astrology for Personal Discovery Workshop. It is a two-hour online course. It is for beginners, so don't worry about that. But you just show up and you just be ready to learn some juicy things about astrology that will help you learn more about yourself and learn more about your life path and your life purpose. And then we just continue on all summer and into the fall with an astrology one-on-one basic course. And that's a four-week course that's going to also give you some more foundational tools so that you learn more about how astrology can work not only in your own personal life, but you understand it so you can use it to interpret energies on the day-to-day and align with those powerful energies. Um, And then it will end with a class where we actually teach you how to really, really dive deep into some more advanced knowledge after you've taken the first two classes to build that foundation of astrology upon which you can then grow into that more intermediate and advanced information that's going to just take you to the next level from there. So if you want to learn more about these classes, I would love it if you would attend. You can go to yashikasintuition.com forward slash astrology to learn more about the current classes that are going on. And if you have any questions, you can always private message me, DM me, or you can email me at yashika at yashikasintuition.com. Otherwise, I hope to see you in class. You are going to be missing out if you're trying to do life without having one of these life hacks, this astrology right here, giving you all the information, all the facts to help you move forward easily. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.